We're joined now by Jennifer Morgan. She is the Special Climate Envoy for Germany, the former Executive Director of Greenpeace, and she joins us now uh, just days after we've set a record temperature here in Europe for the month of April. Thanks so much for joining us on Bloomberg. So you're here, we're doing the Petersburg uh, Climate Dialogue in Berlin. Kind of what are your big takeaways and where is the sort of conversation uh, on climate leading into COP? Well, the Petersburg Climate Dialogue, we had about 40 countries here from small islands to large emerging economies, of course, to the big uh, developed countries. And I think uh, amongst that group, there were some important key takeaways. Number one, we're not on track uh, to meet the Paris goals right now, and we need a course correction. And I think everybody recognizes that we have to step it up. There were talks of a transformational roadmap. Uh, how to close that gap to keep 1.5 degrees within sight. A big part of that, a global renewable energy target, which was discussed, proposed by Minister Baerbock, uh, foreign minister of Germany and the chancellor, and having that be a big part of that uh, COP. And number three, there was some real, um, I think, some important progress on finance. So. For the first time, developed countries were able, donor countries were able to say, we're on track to deliver this 100 billion goal mm -hmm. uh, this year as we had committed. And also Germany committed to um, increasing our commitment to the Green Climate Fund. Uh, so really trying to move forward because the finance part of this is so important. And then in terms of just because you mentioned it, the um, Minister Baerbach's um, sort of a plan here uh, for the renewables expansion, what do you have a figure in mind? Is there some contours we can give around this in order to try to kind of set a mark on what the goal is? Sure thing. Um, the International Renewable Energy Agency has actually calculated what do we need by 2030 to keep the 1.5 degree goal within sight. That's a thousand gigawatts a year. Mm -hmm. We're right now at about 3,000, so we need to go to 10,000. Uh, and they've also identified we, re we very much need the policies, we need the financing, and we also need the skills because it's a huge job creator. Mm -hmm. But we need to make sure that we have the, the people uh, ready to implement all of that, put those solar panels up around the world. And this seems to be a discussion around all the future of all industry, you know, whether it's chip making and renewables and all of them obviously intertwined. What do you see as the sort of defining issue of COP28, sort of, and what would success look like walking away from that? I think the defining issue is whether the world comes together and actually crafts uh, a transformational roadmap, a, a way forward, a plan to keep that 1.5 degree goal within sight. And that means how do we increase nature so that it can absorb more CO2? How do we uh, phase out fossil fuels and phase up renewables? How do, we, how do we make that happen? But also, how do we shift the trillions? Mm. So one of the goals of the Paris Agreement is actually to have all financial flows in line with that 1.5 mm. degree goal. That's not, that's not happening. Uh, and lastly, um, loss and damage. Yes. Um, I think we need to make sure we're really making clear on that promise from last year. And so you've hit on three points that I'd like to go to next. Why don't we start with um, your role as sort of a climate diplomat at a time in the world where diplomacy seems to not be really the guiding impulse at the moment, where you have this, obviously in Ukraine with Russia, you have China and the U.S. sort of. How hard does that make making progress on these climate goals? I think it makes it definitely more challenging. I mean, we can't say that everyone is um, in a easy space right now. But what I find is that the Paris Agreement, in a way, is a space, and the collective human challenge of this climate crisis, which hits everybody so hard, especially the most vulnerable, is a space where countries can come together and try and find solutions. And that's what we found here the last couple of days in Berlin. And coming together in the UAE for COP, does that concern you at all in terms of the language, strong enough language that can go into the communique on fossil fuels, this distinction between phasing out fossil fuels and phasing out fossil fuel emissions? Is carbon capture really going to get us there? I don't think carbon capture is going to get us there. It's needed for a few, for steel and cement and chemicals. Um, I think uh, what we really need to see, and I, I think that the countries of the world will bring that forward, is that the end of the fossil fuel era and the buildup of renewables, I'm confident that the COP president will listen to everyone. Mm. And uh, I think it, when he listens to everyone, he'll see in the direction we need to go. And you were just uh, in China. You've had a lot of talks uh, with, with uh, Chinese officials. And I'm just curious to see, kind of understand what you think China's role is right now in the fight for against climate change. On the one hand, obviously very innovative in a number of clean industries. On the other, still very carbon intensive. So I want to get your sense of that. 
I mean, China has, you know, Xi Jinping has said they, they are now a global player. With that status comes responsibility. And that's both on reducing their emissions and their um, big part of our conversation was what more they can do, how they can uh, add different greenhouse gases, double their renewable energy target. I mean, they, they're going gangbusters on renewables. It was very impressive also in the mobility sector, moving to electric mobility. Um, and also becoming a, a donor to multilateral funds. That's all part of what it means to be uh, a responsible global player. And those were good, solid, constructive conversations, but not easy. And then in terms of loss and damage, which we know was the sort of the big conversation at the last COP, and uh, Schultz yesterday was saying that there's been progress made, and that, but it also needs to include a, a greater number of emerging um, economies. What is China's role in that? Do you think, has there been progress made in, in their contribution to that or their role, the role in that? Well, I think the, the last year's decision was clear. Um, it, you know, everyone who can uh, give funds to such, to the loss and damage multilateral fund should be doing that. I think I'm hearing uh, quite a lot of hesitancy. That's something we've raised with China and other countries, other uh, major emerging economies that uh, they are also responsible and therefore on the basis of equity, they also need to be contributing. But we're not there yet on that one. And in turn, obviously there was the war in Ukraine, which has been sort of the defining energy conversation in Europe for the last year and change. However, it comes at a time when the Greens are in government and German emissions are sort of rising. Where do you kind of, where do you see Germany's sort of role in kind of getting away from that? Are we locking in things like LNG that could be problematic going forward or how do you appraise that? I mean, the Russian war of aggression, uh, I think, has uh, catalyzed, in a way, um, an acceleration of the energy transformation. Five to ten years is what many experts say. So that means the build out of renewables, doing it faster, the energy efficiency. But thinking about that together with climate. So that means any uh, LNG terminals, they need to be consistent with the 2045 uh, climate neutrality goal. Germany is on track. Countries came to Berlin because they want to learn and work with Germany because we have 50 percent renewables in our grid. Um, it's challenging. I think that was other big part of this. You know, when you get to the implementation, you need to do that together in an all of society approach. But there's major wins for those countries that move forward together. So being out front on renewables, global renewable energy target, um, game on on the competition.